Welcome to Clay Center Now. I'm Shannon Stark with Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce. And today we're sitting down with Kristen Johnston. She's representing the State Historical Preservation Office from Topeka. Um, and she's here to talk about Clay Center becoming a downtown historical district. Mm -hmm. um, so I've already been learning a lot from you off camera. <laughs> so I'm excited to just jump right in. And um, you said you've been doing this for almost 14 years. Yes. It the end of this month, it'll be 14 years. That's very awesome. Congratulations. So hard to believe. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know the ins and outs of, of all this, and you're actually a historic tax credit specialist. That's correct. So um, working out of Topeka and focusing on Clay Center's downtown district, mm -hmm. um, they've been working an ongoing process, working on a nominee for the downtown district to be mm -hmm. um, considered historical. And what what exactly has that process looked like for Clay Center? Um, it's a it's a lot of information gathering to start with. It it require the first step is is a survey um, to see what resources downtown Clay Center has. We try to when we do a survey, um, we collect information and then it's also stored online at Kansas Historical resources inventory, which is an online free database that anyone can uh, access and become a user and upload their own photos and information. But it is a collection of as many buildings as we can document within the state. And we started with trying to identify all of the commercial areas within uh, downtown Clay Center to get basic information, age of building, quality, condition of building okay. um, and as a very basic information collection. From there, uh, our office works to sort of find the areas that have the most historic integrity. Mm -hmm. These are buildings that still sort of retain their historic appearance or their mm -hmm. significance or, um, you know, are, are not like a 1980s building mm -hmm. is not a historic building. Right. <laughs> So, you know, those are in the area, but they would not be a contributor. So we try to find the best concentration of the historic buildings. And from there, we outline sort of an area where a National Register nomination can be put together. So this is actually going to be on the national level. Yes. Not just the state level. Not just state. It, it, it's local, state, and national. It's, it's a Very combination cool. of all of a lot of different uh, government layers coming mm -hmm. into play to help out downtown. Mm -hmm. So the nomination provides a basic history of the buildings that are within the district, what their significance is, who may, who the original owners might have been, or what historic records show or in these locations, and then a brief physical description of the building. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second section of the nomination is a history of downtown Clay Center. Um, you know, what th this, what, how it grew, how it developed, and the people involved with those things. So then the, the, the descriptions of the building relate to how that, that developed into the town. Right. So those two pieces go together to form the nomination. That's then, once it's developed and ready to go, it goes to our Historic Sites Board of Review, uh, which meets quarterly. And, and ours nomination was complete October 2019. It was, yeah, that's the, when it was completed, and so it's going to the review board this spring. Very cool. Yeah. Exciting. So once that happens and it's approved, then it's forwarded to the National Park Service, and they make sure we've dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's and have all our information there. And then once they sign off on it, then it's listed on the National Register. Very cool. So to put you on the spot, do you know exactly what is included for Clay Center's downtown district? I don't offhand. Yeah. However, all of our pending nominations are on our website, okay. kshs.org. I'll, I'll have to go check that and out. And the nomination itself at the at the end of the history and documentation is usually a map okay. that will show sort of the outline of the area. Of the best area that's mm -hmm. the most historical. Yep. Yep. Very cool. So, And we currently have two buildings in town that are already listed. That's correct. So it's not an area, it's just the, the building, mm -hmm. our, our courthouse mm -hmm. and our library. That's correct. So. That's correct. Those are the ones I'm most aware with, most uh -huh. aware of because they've done rehab projects in uh -huh. the past. 
yeah, they've definitely benefited from being yes, listed very with much. the historical society. So, mm -hmm. very cool. Good. Um, so, kind of just what will this mean for the the community and for the business owners? Um, I mean, I see a lot of opportunity with it. Mm -hmm. What it allows, I mean, there's there's a couple different layers. You know, the first layer is is listing on the National Register. The register itself is a list of places that are important to the history of our country. Mm -hmm. And so it is... Kind of puts you on the map. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. It, it, sometimes we tell people like, it's just a list, don't worry about it. But it's also a really cool thing to be on that yeah. this part, this downtown represents a piece of American history. Yeah. And that's something to be really proud of, yeah. that your downtown reflects how this area developed and mm -hmm. grew and um, still shows that today for yeah. lots of generations. Well, and I think a lot of like our courthouse square and how we still have a vibrant downtown mm -hmm. right around our courthouse definitely is something to be That's great, yeah. Noted. Just driving down here today, there was no place to park. And that's yeah. an awesome <laughs> problem to have yeah. in a, a downtown courthouse square. Yeah, so. very good. Well, yeah. We'll be right back after this break to learn more about some of the benefits um, about being a downtown historical district. Count on our team at Eagle for reliable internet, TV, and phone, because keeping you connected is what we do. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Count on our team at Eagle for business class phone, internet, and technology solutions because keeping your business connected is what we do. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Welcome back to Clay Center Now. I'm Shannon Stark with Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce and I'm sitting down today with Kristen Johnston from the State Historical Preservation Office and we're talking about Clay Center um, working on becoming our downtown district becoming historical mm -hmm. um, registered with the with the historical office. So um, we talked a little bit about where we were at in the nominee nomination process mm -hmm. and it'll be going to the national board in February or state board in February state board and in then February. national after that and then yeah. national in the spring after that so um but working on that nomination you were talking a little bit off camera about um, contributing and non-contributing mm -hmm. buildings and mm -hmm. I didn't realize like for me I think the whole area is historical so it's all <laughs> historical and um, so if you could explain sure. what that really looks like sure um, a, a district is a defined area and within that area, you're never going to find everything exactly the way it was in 1950. Things change, buildings change over time. So what, what the National Register nomination process does, it identifies buildings that contribute to the historic uh, story of downtown Clay Center, and then those that were that have been altered or changed or are just too new mm -hmm. to get there. So, you know, if you have a building that was built in um, 1980, usually there's a 50 year cutoff. And so it's just too new mm -hmm. uh, to contribute to that historic story. So, um, but we try to identify the ones that, you know, if the original owner or somebody who owned it 50 years ago walked up and looked at it, does it look the same? Can I identify this building? Then they're gonna contribute to the historic story of downtown Clay Center. So we break things up, um, contributing and non-contributing. And is there a certain percentage, like for the area, there has to be a certain percentage of contributing buildings? For a district to move forward, you have to have more than 50% contributing. So that has already been established and, and put mm -hmm. together. So. Um, that's why when we go through the process, we try to identify the area with the best concentration so that we can make sure we're within that, we're, we're more than 50%. Nice. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to, to kind of change your status? Like if you're non-contributing, but you'd like to be, I mean, yeah, yeah. become there, contributing? <laughs> there is, um, as we said before, there's that description, physical description, and that's at the time that the nomination is put together. And buildings have covers on the front, or 
um, have been changed. You, know, you can, you may be listed as non-contributing and you may be able to take that cover off the front and the historic facade is underneath. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply through a process in our office to, to get your status changed to contributing. Likewise, if you have a building that has a fire mm -hmm. and has to be uh, torn down, mm -hmm. then that no longer exists. <laughs> and so that would become non-contributing. Now, this is still a documentation process, so we'd still have a physical description and a history mm -hmm. and, and those kinds of things saved in our state archives and mm -hmm. the National Archives. But um, it would that building would then become a non-contributing part. So things can change back and forth through the process. Yeah. yeah. So if you are a contributing building, what does what does that mean? What are the benefits of of them being listed on the register? Contributing buildings uh, in a, a district um, share the same benefits as being individually listed, like the courthouse and the the library. Um, they are eligible to apply for the tax credit program and the Heritage Trust Fund grant programs that are offered through our office. Mm -hmm. um, those are for both financial incentive programs available for um, those contributing buildings. And what's the difference between the tax credits? I mean, what is a tax credit exactly? <laughs> what does that mean? A tax credit is... Um, money that you get from the government that will pay your tax, your income tax liability for you. Um, I always like to describe it as having store credit. Uh -huh. So if I have store credit with a shoe store mm -hmm. and I go to buy a new pair of shoes, my credit, it's not like a deduction. It doesn't make the shoes cheaper. It pays that for me. So this is like having store credit with the Kansas Department of Revenue for the state tax credit. So you would um, do a project, do a rehab project and maybe get $10,000 worth of credits and then that pays your tax liability for you for 10 years or until you run out. If gotcha. you're a nonprofit, uh, like the courthouse and the library have both used this program, you can sell those credits for oh. cash that comes back to you. Oh. So to Interesting. anybody who's interested who pays state of Kansas income taxes. Yeah. Uh, there's also a federal tax credit program, which works a little bit differently. It's just for commercial buildings uh, that are spending more than a specific financial threshold, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a complicated process. And when people are interested in that, we prefer them to call and talk to me and walk through a process before we figure out which bureaucratic paperwork mess we're going to start. <laughs> um, <laughs> But the federal pro tax credit provides a 20% federal income tax credit um, that you get to piggyback our state 25% income tax credit back. So you oh, can wow. get 45% of project expenses back um, in back coming back to you in tax credits oh, wow. for doing a historic rehab project. Yeah. So if you're if you're a contributing building in the in the downtown area, mm -hmm. there's definitely some benefits to that. Definitely some, some so. good financial benefits. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Well, right after this, we'll actually talk about the grants um, that are available after this break. At Equal Marketing Solutions, we believe your advertising should be as unique as your business. Because if it's important to you, it's important to us. Call Eagle today for your customized marketing plan. Eagle Technology Solutions is the strategic advisor for your IT business needs. Because if it's important to you, it's important to us. Call today, Eagle Technology Solutions. Technology done right. Welcome back to Clay Center Now. I'm Shannon Stark with Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce, and I'm sitting down today with Kristen Johnston from Topeka talking about um, Clay Center downtown area becoming a historical district. Um, so we talked a little bit about the opportunities that the building owners would see um, mm -hmm. and the benefits. And we talked a lot about tax credits, but there's also a grant program available. Yes. Could you talk about that a little there bit? There is um, a statewide grant available for all uh, individually listed or contributing buildings. Um, it's called the Heritage Trust Fund Grant Program. And this grant can provide 80% um, of a project's uh, required funds that's a lot up to ninety thousand dollars wow so there's a cap of ninety thousand right. dollars on that but if you have a hundred thousand dollar project that you're facing right 
this could provide $80,000 to help pay for a historic rehab project. Super cool. So um, yeah, the, the tw there's a 20% match to it. Um, the the catch is it's a it's a competitive uh -huh. program. So grants always sound great, yeah. and then they're so hard to yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, we yeah. have uh, generally between 40 to 60 applicants each year, and we can only fund between 15 and 20. We, we I mean, it's just we get requests for four million dollars worth of work, uh -huh. and we only have about uh, a little shy of a million dollars to hand out. Gotcha. Um, but it's still a great great way to help buildings that are, are really in need. And because it's, because it is so competitive, they look at location, um, geographic location across the state. They will look at um, the greatest need. Mm -hmm. Someone with a hole in their roof is going to have a lot more need than somebody who wants to redo a kitchen. Right. Or something like that. So, right. um, but those are, you can apply every year for these, these grants. Um, the applications are usually due November, December, um, and there are workshops throughout the year that uh, property owners can go to to learn about the application process and what goes into that. Oh, cool. So even if you don't get a grant the first year, you can keep applying, you can do preliminaries and get notes from our office on, on things like that. So cool. it's a really great way to, to do some necessary repairs when you're really struggling. Yeah, very mm -hmm. cool. Um, and so talking about these benefits, the tax credits and the, um, the grant that's available, mm -hmm. but I feel like some you know building owners may feel like this, they may have reservations about it. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you get a lot of questions of what does this really mean? And are you gonna monitor everything I'm doing <laughs> in my building and, and all of that? Mm -hmm. So um, how do you kind of handle that? I mean, how do you answer those there questions? There is always a lot of hesitation. Mm -hmm. Anytime someone brings up a historic district mm -hmm. or historic listing a building. Um, and we always try to make sure people understand that it is still your building. There's, there's not going to be a program that's going to take away your, your property rights. Right. Um, and so, you know, our grants and our tax credits are voluntary programs that you apply for. Um, they're funding available and there's rules that you have to follow because you're getting government funding. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, there won't be a, you won't notice a big, uh, property owners don't notice a big change. Mm -hmm when they become a designated historic district. Right. Uh, the one major thing is that in Kansas, we do have a state law that says a listed building, um, if someone will pull a permit on that work, then it is reviewed to determine does that work damage or destroy the historic building. And so we are given, our office is given a way to comment on that, yes, this might destroy a building if you're gonna tear down a historic building in your courthouse square, yeah, that would hurt the historic district. Mm -hmm. So we wanna just sort of provide a pause to look and see, is there a way to modify the building? Is there a way to make it meet your needs? Sometimes, yes, it's structurally unsound and mm -hmm. we understand those things, but it just has that conversation in place. Right, and then again, that's just a recommendation sure. of, of course. this is gonna hurt your historical. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, a permit, uh, even with our comment, the city council can issue that permit um, regardless of what we say. So uh, we and have then a that very may kind of go back to just changing their like they then may become an uncontributing building. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So yeah, somebody wants to put a metal slip cover over their building because they don't want to do facade repairs. Yes, we would say that damages it, but it could be allowed. Right. You know, it's just, it just gives us a way to comment and say, also say, hey, there might be tax credits or grants available to fix your mm -hmm. facade. And things that they may not think of either. Right. Like, oh, well, if you did this, it would preserve your historical building. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, it's going to damage it. Yes. And I know that there's some people that mm -hmm. are like, oh, I didn't even mm -hmm. think to repair it Again, that way or it whatever. It just yeah. brings up the conversation and provides more options to the property owner that they can choose do I want to take this route or not? Very cool. So, and actually, our, our courthouse and library has kind of um, used these benefits yes. as some in the past. I know you said you've worked with them before. Yes, I've I've been to Clay Center a few times, um, and most of it was to work on tax credit projects with the courthouse, mm -hmm. and then another time with um, 
with the library to, uh, I believe the library specifically was working on making some ADA upgrades. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, these historic rehabs aren't putting a building in a bubble, it's making it usable mm -hmm. in a way that's sensitive to the historic building. Mm -hmm. Um, on the courthouse, we've worked on some exterior masonry repair and stabilization to make sure it still looks beautiful and is taken care of over Which the Which I years. definitely feel like our community enjoys and Good. is thankful for, yeah. for that to, to continue. Yeah, so we've, we've been working on things um, with the local community for, for many years now, and I'm really excited that there's going to be a historic district so that people will be able to take advantage of this even more. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you for all you do for the last 14 years for well, our thank state. You. <laughs> um, I think it's cool too, and I, I do notice when I visit other communities um, that they that they're a historical district mm -hmm. and stuff. So, um, like I said, putting us on the map is yeah. exciting. It'll so be fun. Um, we'll hear later this spring if uh -huh. we if everything's passed, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully some business or business and building owners can start. Yep utilizing some of the yep. benefits. Yeah, when we get closer, there'll be notification letters that are sent to property owners and Perfect. all that stuff too. So we make sure everyone is aware of everything that's going on. Informed that it's official that's right. and yes. very cool. Well, thank you for setting down with us today. We appreciate it. And um, I'm Shannon Stark with Clayson or Now.